Just a quick, you know, a quick thing. I know last week I had a couple of people ask about some of the, uh, the, the charts. And I'll go ahead and try to get uh, one of the final slide printed up. But what I did, uh, and for those of you that weren't here, those are charts on really kind of how to divide your Bible up a little bit when you're reading through to give you a, just a, a general idea of where things fit. It'll help you understand your Bible a lot better. Uh, but what I did is I put on the website, um, I put a, a main heading of study up across the top. And if you'll click on that website, it'll take you to the, to the page that's got a brief explanation of what I meant by all the slides. And then it also has every one of the slides in there that you can copy and download for yourself. So if anybody is interested in doing that, please feel free to go to the, the website and take a, look at, um, take a look at that page. Joshua chapter 24, if you will, here this morning, open your Bibles to Joshua chapter 24. Uh, and I'm uh, going to try to hurry. That never works, but I really will try. <clears throat> but we do have to, uh, to read a little bit. So last week we talked about Moses and uh, how that at the end of Moses' life, you know, he was still strong. We talked about a little strength. <clears throat> and now we're coming up to uh, Moses' successor, Joshua. And at the end of the book of Joshua, Joshua is getting ready to die. But before he does, he, um, he gives the children of Israel some things to think about. And it starts in chapter 24. It says, Joshua gathered all the tribes of uh, Israel to Sechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads. And uh, that's not to roll them down the bowling alley. That's for the head uh, leaders and for their judges and for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him through all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. And I gave um, unto Isaac Jacob and Esau, and I gave unto Esau Mount Seir, uh, to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. And I sent uh, Moses also and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to, the, to that which I did among them. And afterward I brought you out, and I brought your fathers out of Egypt. And you came unto the sea, and uh, the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen under the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between them and you, the Egyptians, and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And ye have dwelt in the wilderness a long season. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side of Jordan, and they uh, fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, and, uh, that you might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. Uh, then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel, and sent and called Balaam, the son of uh, Beor, uh, to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam, therefore he blessed you. Still, uh, so I delivered you out of his hand. And ye went over Jordan and came into Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I delivered them into your hand. And I sent uh, the hornet before you, which drave them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not. And ye dwell in them, of the vineyards and oliveyards which ye planted not, do ye eat. Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, the Bible. Once again, certainly appreciate the, uh, the, the love and uh, the fellowship uh, amongst the brethren here at the church. Uh, Lord, you have blessed my wife and myself uh, with a great family, with um, uh, great uh, friends that we can fellowship with here at church, uh, friends that we love and that love us. And uh, Lord, you've taken care of us uh, throughout uh, our whole lives, uh, through the tough times, through the great times. And Father, you're a great God. And I pray that that would be impressed upon each and every individual here. You are certainly worth serving. And Father, you do all things well. I ask you now just to bless this um, uh, sermon here this morning. I ask you to minister to the hearts of your people. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so, so we're up to uh, uh, Joshua. And Joshua is, again, 
kind of rehearsing, uh, Joshua's getting ready to die here, and he's rehearsing to the nation of Israel uh, a lot of things that are going on, and he knows that they're going to be fighting a battle. Amen? Amen. He knows that they're going to be facing uh, the devil and all the fierceness that the devil can throw at them. He knows that the devil is going to try at every step along their way to try and, and spoil uh, the goodness that the Lord has given them. The devil is going to try to deter them from following the Lord. And the devil is going to try to basically just destroy every possible thing that he can in their lives. Amen? So I just titled this very simply, Overcoming a Strong Enemy. Overcoming a Strong Enemy. Joshua is trying to prepare Israel for what they face. And like we said before, these things were written for our admonition and our learning. And we ought to be able to learn a few things from Joshua as he prepared the nation of Israel. Amen? Amen. So, um, so Joshua has uh, is gone through, and there's just a, <clears throat> there's just a couple things that, that you and I need to think of because we're going to, you know, the idea is that as we look at what's happening with Joshua and the nation of Israel and their descendants, folks, you ought to be able to look at that story and parallel things in your life. Amen? Amen? Not all those things are comfortable to look at. But some of them are very encouraging along the way. Amen? Amen. Um, and so I'm just going to take a look here at uh, some things with Joshua. And I noticed that uh, right off the bat, one of the things that Joshua gave the nation of Israel as he was preparing them to stand on their own two feet and to fight, like you and I have to stand on our own two feet and fight, is Joshua set before the nation of Israel and he remembered the victories that the nation of Israel had. Amen. It says in uh, Joshua 24, 13, And I have given you, and all through that passage that we read, Joshua's rehearsing all the things the Lord has done for the nation of Israel. And he reminds them of the victories that the Lord has given them. I mean, you take a look at uh, verse 15. Joshua says this, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods uh, which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, one of the most you know, known verses in the Bible, for, for as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Folks, uh, one of the things that, that Joshua does is he... Uh, as he tries to transition the nation of Israel into the promised land and into the rest of their life, is he actually has to sit back and remind them of the victories that they've had. You know what will happen to you and me as a Christian is we, get to, we have to decide every day that we wake up, am I going to serve the Lord today or not? Every time we have to make a decision, we have to decide whether we're going to do it according to the Bible or according to our own lusts. Amen. Uh, one of the things that will help you along the way, if you find yourself veering off and you find yourself not thinking about the Lord Jesus Christ uh, very often, if the Lord is not a regular part of, of your thought process, listen, you have then kind of, uh, you have taken a detour from the path that the Lord would have you on. Amen? Amen. One of the easiest ways to correct that in your life is simply to remind yourself of how good the Lord has been to you. Amen? It's kind of hard. I mean, if you have a friend that's just been good to you for a number of years, and you've seen his faithfulness, you've seen him come through in a pinch, you've seen him provide things when you needed it, maybe give you help when you needed it, it's kind of hard to forget that friend and think ill of him. Amen? But, but the problem is that we as human beings, a lot of times, we don't, <coughs> we don't practice that when it comes to God. We live our life, we got our things that we have to do, we have our agenda, we have our schedule. The calendar says on this day at this... I don't have a calendar anymore. <laughs> My wife has a calendar. She lets me see it. <laughs> and then I decide whether I want to listen or not. But we look at our calendar and, and, and we have a schedule and we know what to do and we have a pattern that, that we normally, you know, day in, day out, that we probably follow. But how often does that really include the Lord? Amen? Amen? Um, I knew this about retirement, because I know me. 
because I like to be lazy just like everybody else. And I could sit out in the woods all day long and watch deer ask him. It's, it's fun. I'll chase them down. I'll build, I'll build more deer feeders. <laughs> Wasn't that, uh, we had some folks come over for a first aid class yesterday, and we just gotten the deer feeder out, and I'd tell the grandkids, I said, just give them time. It's going to take the deer a couple days to find the, the feed. And we had uh, some folks over. We did a first aid class for some of the leadership here. And sure enough, right during the leadership class, I mean, of all times, they found it. There's probably, what, four or five half dozen deer out at the feeder. It was, it was awesome. But I, I could enjoy that. I could enjoy scuba diving all the time. I could enjoy shooting all the time. Trust me, I could enjoy shooting. <laughs> I could enjoy a lot of things all the time, but one of the things I knew I had to do is I knew I had to make it a priority to keep God first and foremost. Even now that I, quote, have extra time. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> but, but, the, but you have to remember, you have to remember your victories. Listen, you have to look back and you have to consider your salvation. You have to look back when, when, you're, when you're off track, when you're not sure where things are going. Listen, you have to look back and be able to say, you know what, in spite of everything that's going on, I know I got saved when I was, or I know I got saved at where, or what date. You may not remember the exact date, the exact time, the exact hour, but you're going to need to know that your salvation is sure. Why? Because that's a victory that you need to cling to. Amen. And, and that, that's going to become very important as time goes on in your life. Listen, you're going to have to, again, I'm hurrying. You're going to have to be able to sit back and count your blessings. You say, well, God hasn't been very good to me. Oh, yeah? <laughs> At the very least, he hasn't punished you as much as you deserved. <laughs> All right? I mean, that's the very least. That's the worst case scenario. But you look back and you count your blessings. I mean, the Lord's given you a good wife, good husband, good children, right? He gave you a mind you can think. He gave you the ability to work. He's put food in your belly. He's given you the ability to breathe. You say, when I get up in the morning, everything aches. I know it does, but it didn't always, <laughs> right? And he's given you, the Lord's given you far more than, than you have a tendency to think about. And so what Joshua does as those people were getting ready to, to move on is Joshua sat back and said, guys, remember how good the Lord has been. Amen? Remember how good the Lord has been. Again, I am, I am trying. Uh, remember where they came from. Re, I mean, realize... Uh, Remember the victories, your salvation, count your blessings. And then, <clears throat> and then another thing that you're going to have to do is this. You're going to have to realize some mistakes that were made by you and by others along the way. You're going to have to realize some mistakes that were made along the, along the way. Joshua 24, 24 says this. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and his voice we will obey. Can you find the mistake? The people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and his voice we will obey. What's the mistake? tell you what the mistake is here. The mistake that a lot of Christians make, especially when they first get started in their Christian life, right after they get saved, or a mistake that they make when they, you know, they get to a point where they decide, like Joshua, you know, choose this day whom you will serve. As for me, in my house, we will serve the Lord. <clears throat> and all the people are saying, yes, 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 go, 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 rah, 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 let's serve the Lord. You say, what's the mistake? Take a look at, there, well, this mistake is a huge problem that kills Christianity. And it'll kill your Christianity if you're not careful. Many Christians have fallen prey to it. Can you see it? 
You got your Bibles open, right? You're looking at Joshua 24, and the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God uh, will we serve, and his voice uh, will we obey. You say, what on earth is the mistake with that? Exactly. You don't see the mistake. Take a look at verse 23. Now therefore, put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you and incline your heart to the Lord. Here's the mistake. Let me give you a parallel. You having problems with your vehicle. You take it into a mechanic. Brother Bill, he says this. He says, your tires are shot, man. That's not going to be balanced. They're, these tires are, you know, they're... There is no way to balance them. Your tires are shot. It's dangerous for you to get your, you know, to drive this vehicle. These tires are no good. You've got to get these tires taken care of. And you leave the mechanic shop and you walk away and you take it to a car wash. Yay! I'm going to take care of my car. And you change the oil. And you polish it and you wax it. And it looks really good on the outside, but you did not address what Bill said was the real problem. Joshua said to the nation of Israel, get rid of these gods which ye have served. And you know what they said? Yay, we'll follow the Lord. <clears throat> they missed the real problem. Verse 23, he tells them exactly what to take care of. Verse 24 sounds really good. Modern Christians, yay, 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 it sounds really good. But verse 24 does not address the problem. It's a problem that they still had those gods to begin with after leaving Exodus, after wandering around the wilderness for 40 years, after going through the book of Joshua, getting into the promised land, conquering all the, the, uh, the peoples that they conquered, the Amorites, the Hittites, all the battles they won, possessing all the cities, getting the land divided all up. That's what happens in Joshua. And at the end of Joshua, Joshua is telling them, you still need to get rid of your gods. And they don't even address it. They missed the problem all together. It sounded good. It sounded good. Oh, yes, I'm going to serve God. But you're not willing <laughs> to change the tires, and that's the problem. Amen? Amen? Listen, because they failed, because they failed to uh, address the real problem, listen, they got on when Joshua died, and they carried on into the book of Judges, and we're going to look at that here in just a second. They carried on... <clears throat> And what happened is they lulled themselves to sleep. They, their, their defenses drop. Um, you know how at, at uh, Pearl Harbor, when the Japanese attacked you know, Pearl Harbor, you know that we were kind of hesitant to get started in the war over there in the Pacific, right? Amen. And you know that there were some things that happened. So we were, I mean, politically and strategically, we were kind of kind of keeping ourselves out of that whole thing and hoping that it would go away and wishing that it wouldn't happen. And we even probably knew that Pearl Harbor was going to happen and maybe some say they let it happen for a reason, but you know that they had this great thing called radar back then and antiquated as it may have been. <laughs> and you know that there was a radar operator that saw that attack coming in and you know that that Information never made it to the right people so the right decisions could be made and voila, we were attacked at Pearl Harbor. We dropped our defenses. Amen? We dropped our defenses for something that we knew was imminent. And we lost nearly 3,000 people. Now that's what's happening that's what's happening with the nation of Israel. They've got a very positive attitude. Rah, 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 yes, yes. But they never really took care of the real issue. Getting rid of the other gods. Amen. Right? Um, and how does that...
progress? How does that progress? Take a look at, um, take a look at Judges chapter 2. Judges chapter 2. I'll tell you how that progresses. You may get by with it a little bit, but eventually you're going to fail your children. Take a look at Judges chapter 2. Judges chapter 2, take a look at verse 7. Again, uh, verse 6, Joshua had let the people go. The children of Israel went every man into his uh, inheritance to possess it. So Joshua just finished up in verse 6. And the people uh, served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he had uh, did for Israel. Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. They buried him in the border of the inheritance of uh, timnath Heres and of, in the Mount uh, Ephraim on the north side of the hill of Gaish. And also, all the generation were gathered unto their fathers, and also all that generation, excuse me, were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which they had done for Israel. Amen. You see, the nation of Israel didn't completely get rid of the gods that they were supposed to get rid of. And we, I don't have time, we can go through the book of Judges, we can see that, we know that's happened, they, they got in trouble for it over and over and over again. But, but the bottom line is, they were given a specific set of commands and told something very specific the Lord needed to get out of their lives, and they didn't want to do it. They wanted to serve God, yay, rah, 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 but they didn't want to address that one area. Now, I don't know what that area is for you, but I tell you what happened. The nation of Israel, that area became a, um, a, a chink in their armor. And the devil got in, and because they kept it, they kind of slacked off a little. They weren't, they weren't ready to kind of completely, um, completely go the route that they were supposed to go. They, they, they weren't fully committed to this whole thing, right? They, um, they, they wound up, you know, they wound up um, reluctant and uh, let's not worry about the gods. They'll be all right. We're still offering sacrifice. We're still going to church. We're still serving the Lord. We're still obeying. Everything is good. And you know what? They got away with it, kind of, not really, but a little bit. But then they passed away. And their children after them yes. now didn't have the complete influence they should have had. Their children weren't taught the way they should have been taught. Their children weren't trained to be obedient. They're, they didn't sit down like they were told and rehearse all of these things. That's what Joshua was doing with them that the, in, in, um, at the end of, you know, Deuteronomy, or in, at the end of Joshua, Joshua was sitting down with him rehearsing, rehearsing hey, look how, look how the Lord has blessed us. Look how the Lord has taken care of us. Look what the Lord's done for us. And, and they didn't follow that up with their children. And so their children weren't taught. And their children weren't trained to obey. And folks, in essence, in one generation... It was gone. Because you got Joshua, he's an old man. And all the people that were there kind of held on for a while. But when they died, they're sons. So a generation, I know it's probably Joshua's you know, grandsons. But the people that were there when Joshua died, all of those guys are the ones that failed to teach their children. Amen. Why? It all started because when the Lord gave them instructions, when Joshua rehearsed this whole thing, made them memorize, they all said, Joshua said specifically, get rid of the gods. And they all said, rah, 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 we'll serve God, we'll obey him. But they never mentioned anything about the gods. See, one of the things that, you say, how do I apply that in my life? I tell you how you apply that. You've got to look at this Christianity thing, and I'm telling you, it's not, it may very well be one thing the Lord's dealing with you about personally, 
And that may very well be the case. And if that's the case, get it. But, but it's really more about the Lord dealing with you and you having the, the, the attitude and the spirit and the heart to say, okay, Lord, whatever you want done, I'm going to address that. Amen. And the Lord shows you, hey, you got a problem here. You got a problem with your tires. Don't go change oil. Right? You're low on transmission fluid. Don't get new wheel bearings. You got to address the problem that the Lord enlightens you with. Amen. Why? Because later on down the road, if you don't, it will catch up with you. You say, I can get by with it right now. My transmission fluid is only low. Well, it's low for a reason. It's probably leaking somewhere. How long are you going to get by with it? I don't know. A week? A month? A year? But they didn't, they were reluctant to go all in for the Lord Jesus Christ. It was kind of a, you know, we kind of like this idea of God. We'll keep him over here on the side. Yeah, we'll serve him. We'll, we'll obey him. But we got our gods here we're not going to get rid of. And it ruined them. They were reluctant. They were, they, they just couldn't, they just couldn't bring themselves to be fully committed because they didn't want to address the tires. And what happened? Their children suffered. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have to hurry. The other thing, um, the other thing that you have to do is this. Is at some point in time, the Lord's going to see that situation. And you and I are in the middle of a nation that's done exactly what the nation of Israel has done. Is that fair to say? You got a bunch of people who say, rah, 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 Jesus. But when it comes right down to it, they really don't want to, they want to check the tires. You say, why not? It's, it seems so, when you're talking about auto mechanics, it seems like simple. Well, why don't you just check the tires? That's what the mechanic said. I know. But when it comes to, to Christians in America and, and Christians really in the world, in the latter days, the Bible says, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, Right? So the, the Lord warns us about things in our spiritual life, and we, like the nation of Israel, put this facade up, and rah, 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 I'm following Jesus, but we don't really, we don't really have the heart to follow him. Now that's the majority of the nation of Israel. Amen? Amen. Isn't it fair to say the majority of Israel made that mistake? And you read through the book of Judges, I don't have time to go through it, but you'll see it. The majority of Israel made that mistake. But let me tell you this, and this is where hopefully it comes to us. There are people that did not fall into that trap. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. There are people that did not fall into that trap. It says in Judges 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 9, when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up. A deliverer. So here we are in, in uh, 2020 in America, and I know this. I know the natural course of things with men. Just men are men, are men. women are women, we're all the same, right? The natural course is what happened to the nation of Israel. God's going to try to, you know, Joshua's going to try to remind them of how great God is, remind them of all the victories, remind them of all the blessings, remind them of their salvation. And most Christians are going to go, rah, 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 yay, 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 yes, I love Jesus. But they're never really going to deal with what needs to be dealt with. That's just the pattern we see. But what I'm after, and what I wanted to bring out to light, is that when that happens, the Lord looks through that nation, 
And he looks for somebody that's willing to rise up. He, he looks for somebody that's willing to rise above the status quo. I don't mean the prideful way, uh, you know, that this guy's better than that. I mean, the Lord's just looking for somebody that will adopt that attitude of, hey, you know what? The mechanic said the tires are bad. I'm not going to change the oil. Amen. I'm going to go get new tires. My, son's a, a, my son in law's a, a physical therapist. You know what he says the biggest problem with getting people well is in physical therapy? They don't do what the doctor tells them to do. <laughs> it's that simple. It's really not complicated. He says, I get patients in all the time, and every physical therapist that I talk to, the same thing. He says, I get them in, <clears throat> and I give them the exercises to do, I give them this, 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 and this, and I know good and well if they do that, it'll work. And they come back to me later on and I ask them, have you done this? And they go, yes, I did that. And then I check them out and I go, no, you didn't. <laughs> With a car, it's the tires, dummy. With a physical therapist, what's the common denominator? We don't want to listen. It's, it's not hard. This thing, uh, successful Christianity, this thing we're trying to do, is not really that hard. But you do have to listen to those people that know what they're talking about. Like God. I, I figure he's, he knows what he's talking about. Right? When the children of Israel cried, when it finally got bad enough, when they got down and they were in the dumps and the, their enemies started taking them over and everything started going wrong, what do they do? They cry out to God, God, help me. And you know what God did over and over and over? He rose up someone that would just listen. Take a look and I, I, I'm trying to hurry. I really am trying to hurry. Take a look at Joshua um, 3 9. It says this When the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel. Who delivered them? Ah, good thing. Even Othniel. They say, Yeah, so what? The son of Kenaz. Yes, so what? Caleb's younger brother. Listen, Joshua and Caleb were the two spies that went into the land that brought back a good report. Joshua's, uh, Caleb's brother was Kenaz. Caleb's brother is watching Caleb. Yes. Going, whoa, hey, he followed the Lord. Hey, it worked. Hey, this is a great thing. Caleb's brother, Kenaz, obviously talked to his son, Othniel. Othniel is Joshua's nephew. No, yeah, Caleb's nephew. I'm sorry. I know I said that, said that wrong there. Thanks. That's why I've been married to her for 36 years. She keeps me straight. <laughs> if I ever need to know anything about the Bible, I just ask her. <laughs> Othniel is Caleb's nephew. Here's a guy that just was willing to listen to the advice, follow the advice. The children of Israel are crying. All he did was listen to what his dad told him and then followed it. Next thing you know, folks, the Lord's raising his, him up to be the deliverer of a whole nation. All right, let's put it in our little sphere here. You say, I'm never going to be a deliverer of the whole nation. Okay, maybe not. You can be a huge deliverer in your own family. Amen? Amen. Amen. You say, what does it take? Just being an Othniel. Because you got a bunch of people in the nation of Israel and your family that are crying out, God save us! And the Lord's looking, going, I'm looking for a deliverer. I'm looking for a deliverer. I'm looking for a deliverer. And there, whoa, there's Othniel. What has he got special about him? Nothing. 
He just listened. He did what the physical therapist did, and guess what? He got better. He changed the tires, and guess what? The real problem got resolved. That's what I want us to be. It's, it's not that Othniel is, you know, a hundred times more better than every... That's a really good English. Sorry, Renee. Oh, she's not here. Good. <laughs> <laughs> more better. <laughs> it's not that Othniel is superior to everybody else. Othniel just took what was said to heart. And he just listened. You and I can do that. It's not hard. You don't have to be a Moses. You didn't even know who Othniel was, did you? Some dude's nephew. What did he do? He just listened. And he delivered the nation of Israel. And you know what? He delivered the nation of Israel for 40 years. That's Othniel. What do you got to do if the Lord wants to raise you up as a deliverer? Because that's really what we're talking about. Can the Lord raise you up as a deliverer? What do you got to do? You got to be kind of fed up with how things are going. Amen. Amen? The children of Israel, it says in Joshua 3, 9, they cried unto the Lord. Lord, I don't like the way the things are going in my life. I'm fed up with them. Things are not going well. I need help. You got to be kind of fed up with the way things are going. Fair enough? Uh, we got fed up after, uh, after Pearl Harbor. Um, and, you know, we, we decided, okay, time to go to war. Right? Now, sometimes it takes a surprise attack like that. Sometimes it takes a devastating defeat before some people get fed up. But at some point, we got to get fed up enough with when things are going bad that we want to do good. Amen. We want to do things the right way. And I, I'm hurrying. And you got to be, you got to be fearless. So Pearl Harbor happened. A mere five months later, they decided, yes, we're fed up with this. We're going to go. Boat. We're going to go to war. You guys know the Battle of the Coral Sea. We went out. We fought the Japanese fleet. They fought us, and it was kind of more or less a stalemate. We lost the carrier, Lexington. You know, they lost some things. We lost some things. And he kind of walked away, and nobody really won. And we're going, oh, 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 oh man. First, this enemy, this strong enemy, has, has caught us by surprise, pounced on us, and we experienced a devastating defeat. Now we rose up because we're fed up. We went out, and we tried to fight, and we weren't afraid to fight, and we really didn't win the battle. That happened just five months after Pearl Harbor. So you got to rise up. What are we after? We're after, listen, we're after the Lord rising you up as a deliverer for your family, for your friends, right? For your circle. I can't reach your circle. But when you rise up, you have to, you have, in order for the Lord to, to call you and rise you up as a deliverer, you, you got to be fed up with the way things are going. Okay, Lord, I've had enough. I'm ready for a change. You got to be fearless. You can't be afraid. You can't be afraid to face defeat. And you're going to have to be contrary to everything sometimes that the modern world tries to teach us. You are going to have to be a fighter. Othniel rose up. The Lord raised Othniel up. And he went out and he fought. He said, I've had enough. I remember what my dad said. Ken has. And how that my uncle, Caleb, was one of the two spies that came back with a good report. 
I've heard this story. And Othniel rose up and Othniel went to the fight. He wasn't reluctant. It wasn't a half-hearted thing. The Lord looked down and saw Othniel was willing to do what he said to do. Othniel rose up. And it's not that, you're, that Othniel probably wasn't scared. Because when you go through the book of Judges, like Gideon, you'll find some people that at first, they're a little scared. That's normal. And the Lord reassures them. And then they get up and they do it anyway. That's the fearless part. It's like, okay, the Lord will take care of my fear. It doesn't mean you don't experience fear. It's you fight in spite of your fear. Othniel rose up and he fought. The Americans after Pearl Harbor and then the Battle of the Coral Sea, you know, they're, they're, in a, they're in a dilemma. Now what do we do? Because Japan's a mighty foe. And the devil's a mighty foe. And he's trying to take us down. But the Lord's looking for an Othniel. Somebody to raise up. And then we, we get to the Battle of, of Midway. And you know, the, the Battle of Midway was only a month after Coral Sea. Six months after Pearl Harbor. That's all the time that elapsed. Six months. It's amazing. The Americans became fed up. They were attacked. Didn't like being where they were. They, they launched a major offensive at Coral Sea to try to try to get things to go on there, try to decimate the Japanese Navy. And you know what? It didn't work. In fact, really, we lost more ships at Coral Sea than they did. And both sides kind of left thinking, oh, man, let's just get out of here. <laughs> but they kept going. And then we got to Midway. And Midway kind of turned turn the... Uh, Turn the tide, so to speak. It was tough. But the Japanese lost four fleet carriers. They lost a heavy cruiser. They lost uh, uh, a damaged severely another heavy cruiser. They lost somewhere around 250 aircraft. Somewhere around 300 or 33, excuse me, 3,000 people killed. It was a turning point because of the Battle of Midway. So the Japanese were, Japanese were trying to project their naval power further and further and further east. And you see where Midway is up here, where they were trying to get to. Look how close that is to Hawaii. And I, I'm done. Folks, that's what the devil's trying to do to us. He's trying to take more and more territory. And as a whole, the nation hasn't dealt with the right problems. But the good news is, there's an Othniel. And the Lord's looking for a deliverer. I would venture to say this, in every one of your families... And the question is, are you going to rise to the occasion? Because somebody needs to stop. It's, it's ugly. The battle's ugly. But somebody needs to stop. Somebody needs to be fearless and mount up a defense. And folks, that's where we come in. Just an Othniel. Like I said, chances are pretty good you didn't even know his name before this. But he's the first major one that rises up after the whole nation goes the wrong way. And you don't even know his name until today. And because he listened for 40 years, how would you like it if your testimony and your strength as a Christian in your family had an impact for 40 years. That's impressive. Amen? That's what we're after.
Every family needs Nathaniel. I mean, Caleb was on the right track because he had him and Kenaz and Othniel, <laughs> right? But <laughs> every family needs Nathaniel. Overcoming a strong enemy. How do we become that Othniel? We've got to remember the victories the Lord's given us. Salvation, the blessings, we've got to remember. Don't ever forget. That's what Joshua was trying to do with the nation of Israel. We've got to realize the mistakes that are commonly made. With Israel, it was not taking care of the tires after the mechanic told him that was the problem. It seemed innocent enough, but it caused major problems. And then the Lord's looking to rise up a deliverer. What does it take? Just an Othniel that'll listen. Amen? Every family needs one. Let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, uh, the Bible, uh, Lord, for... Uh, the, the stories that you chose to put in this book, that we might be able to read them, to see parallels between what happened to the nation of Israel and, quite frankly, what happens in our own lives, in our own families, and in our own country. But Father, you've given us in these stories, in these uh, accounts, you've given us some answers and some insight as to how to be victorious, how to overcome. But Lord, I know we have a strong enemy. We do. Uh, the devil is nothing to, be, uh, uh, nothing to be laughed at. He is a, a serious adversary. But we have an even greater God. We have a greater book. I pray that you'd help us, Father, to rise up and be the deliverer that you want us to be. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.